So let's take a look at the uh, weather today. Why don't we bring that up, Mr. Director? Brought to you by AccuWeather, of course, the weather partner here for Sox Out Racing. Weather report today. You can see the track information there. Weather report looks like uh, about 66 degrees in freedom units, about 18 degrees Celsius. Your humidity there you see as well, 23 and 7. Mostly cloudy with about 60% uh, humidity on the racetrack and your winds 7 miles per hour or 11 kph. Let's go to your starting grid and take you through who's going to be starting where here for the 27 lap race here from Brands Hatch. Starting on pole is going to be the number one of Bobby Zelensky. You saw his, uh, saw his qualifying lap there on the stream as well. We'll go through the rest of your starting order. Sven Cameron starts second. Eric Blixt going to start third. Fourth to Aaron Smith. Paul Slevinick going to start fifth. Sixth to Andrew Karen. Seventh going to go to Dallas Pataska. James King going to start eighth. Ninth to Jay uh, Steffi. Ninth going to go to Stephen uh, Dager Jr. And uh, he's going to round out your top 10. Joshua Mertz is going to start 11th, 12th to Roger Gregory. Michael Skurlock going to start 13th. Thomas O'Leary, 14th, 15th to Clifton Cockrell. 16th going to go to Connor Horn. Horn as we mentioned, he'll be starting in the rear of your field. And Aspen Belvin going to round out the, tw the 17 trucks here taking the track here at Brands Hatch. Everybody lined up behind the Porsche Pace Car, the iRacing Porsche Pace Car, which got brought out in the last build here. There we go. There's the starting grid we were able to get for you there. Paul, run you through who's going to be starting where really quickly here. But uh, as we mentioned, 27 laps going to be on tap here. The pit window is going to be just around uh, that. It's going to open up on lap number nine. And uh, it'll be open through lap number 18. Of course, these drivers are going to have to take a manual uh, four-tire and fuel pit stop. They could, I think, just make it on fuel if they saved a little bit, but uh, have that mandatory pit stop, so not a huge issue for these guys. You can see running through, that's your 17 starters. The Buck Jones Racing driver, that number 84 Chevrolet, the last driver to round out the field. As we roll a ray here for the start for what will be the one and only parade lap around the 2.3 mile circuit here at Brands Hatch. Nine turns, went through, your, uh, went through a little bit of your weather there earlier on. And uh, Bobby Zelensky already heading down the first, uh, just under the car loop bridge right now. So already rolling through the rest of your field. Yep, there he is. You can see plenty of camera angles. Of course, we want to give a shout out to Estevan Bello, of course, for hooking us up with all the cameras. And uh, Estevan always does a great job. And if you are curious about the cameras that you're seeing here on screen, make sure to check him out at trackcams22.com, trackcams22.com, and you can see the cameras that RaceBot TV uses, PSR TV uses. We, uh, of course, my uh, my usual home at Podium Esports, we used for the Porsche Club of America Sim Racing Series, all that sort of thing as well. So we ride on board with Sven Kamer. It's going to be starting on the outside to the 83 of Bobby Zelensky. Of course, this is a right-hand heavy turn circuit, so that means the inside will be referring to, well, that right side of the track. So things are a little bit flipped here on when we cross the pond as well. You can see on board Paul Slavinik, the, the established, the writer and scholar himself, the number 88. And of course, I mentioned uh, Aaron Smith's new paint. You can see that off to the left-hand side, the bright yellow 70. You can tell it's Aaron Smith because it says Smith on the side. Even I can tell that. We head through up at the top of the hill, and we head back down the hill, getting ready to kick things off here. It seems, Paul, we've had a problem. I've lost my track map. Oh, I just found it. Okay. Paul, see, unfortunately, Paul would be with me in the commentary box, but, well, I don't think anybody wants to hear that because he sounds like a uh, deflating basketball. And I don't think anybody wants to listen to that right now as we continue to pace through the left-hand turn. Yeah, you're welcome, Paul, as we head down clear ways as uh, I get a, a cheeky message from our uh, director. As we head under the Advent Bridge, we say thank you very much for uh, joining us here on the Socks Out Racing Facebook and Twitch stream as the pace car gets set to make the right-hand turn, ducks down under... Neath pit row in the field going to be in control of Bobby Zelensky and Sven Kamertz as they come across the grandstands to the left, the green flag in the air. Let's go racing for Brands Hatch. We all 
all seem to make it through turn number one there. Oh, one truck off in the background. Looks like swerving all over the place. That looked to be, uh, couldn't tell who that was. We'll take a look at that once we finish the first lap. That was the 93 of uh, Michael Skurlock. Got all sorts out of shape on the grass, but managed to somehow hold on to it. Only got a little bit of damage, but you see two wide battle there as well on your screen. With 49, doing an excellent job. Has gained a couple positions already. That's Jay Sniffy. But right now, it's all Bobby Zelensky way out in front by a hundred mile over Sven Gamerts. And Eric Blix, it's kind of spaced out your top three side by side. Meanwhile, that's Dallas Pataska on the outside of Paul Slavinik. They'll go side by side. No, Pataska's going to back out of the corner. So they will go single files. We head through the complicated bits right now. Head down the hill once again towards Graham Hill Bend. As uh, hopefully I didn't get lost once again. I think I might have gotten lost. That's okay. Dallas Pataska is still riding on board with him. No, I think I am where I'm supposed to be. As it sits right now, oh, I have a track map. Oh, that makes it way easier. So we head up the hill now towards uh, towards Clearways once again. It's the end of the first lap already, and Bobby Zelensky way out in front as Pataska can continue to attack on that outside line. He'll be able to hold on to the truck and just get past the left and nose in front. Can he clear? Yes, he can. Dallas Pataska gonna cut in front of Paul Slevinick. First main pass in your top five, but it's all been Bobby Zelensky from the uh, from the get-go here as he is way out in front with this battle pack, about four trucks. It looks like Savinick's gonna cover that spot, cut right in front of that driver right behind him. That's the 27 of Andrew Karen, and uh, his truck gonna wiggle a little bit. Did not like being blocked there as we head. Now we head down Graham Hill Bend and onto the Cooper straight, and you can see James King right behind him. The truck does a little bit of a wiggle, is able to hold on to it. Of course, we do want to mention, of course, all those drivers, those yellow plates over the top of the windshield, as well as the yellow names on the rear deck. Those are the rookies, these guys who are uh, hitting Brands Hatch in the trucks for the first time this season and probably in their career. Not a usual thing you like to see, but um, run right now for the driver in that butt kicker number 27 for the RSR Esports Red Driver. Karen sitting comfortably in that seventh place position right now. Lost that first spot, but trying to gain it back as he gains a ton of time on Paul Slavinick. Guy, that truck's all sorts of out of shape right in front of him. You can see that truck wiggle all over the place, able to hold on to it. But look at the time Karen's able to gain right up towards him as we head under the Advent Bridge, getting ready to complete lap number two. Bobby Zelensky's already doing that, and he's out to about a second right now over Sven Kamer. As you can see up top, you can follow along all the action up top as well. We have that ticker there. You can see your intervals. You can see what kind of truck everybody's driving their driver number as well. Under the car loop bridge and Sven Kamert's not letting uh, Bobby Zelensky quite out of his sight and I could say the same about Eric Blix as uh, yeah, everybody continuing to ride around right now. No racebot.tv slash timing for us this evening unfortunately but Aaron Smith actually gonna run off a little bit off track there but he's kind of the first driver kind of in his own middle of nowhere position you'll see there's the three trucks then there's Aaron who just kind of sneak snuck onto your screen and then you drop back a little bit further and you get into this battle pack with a uh, Pataska, Slavinik, Karen and O'Leary uh, kind of the next four trucks as it looks like James King lost out that position and uh, Thomas O'Leary able to jump up one spot on the uh, on the pylon right now. So he's now running eighth. He started back at 14th. So Thomas O'Leary making his bid for hard charger of the race so far, doing an excellent job. Gained five positions, or six positions if even, uh, so far. And we're only two lap, two and a half laps into this thing. Tried to go for the attack on Andrew Karen, but not able to do so. He saw the spot though, but not stick the uh, the truck down there. The Rackles online turn racing driver. So he'll slow down here and head through Jim Clark curve and back up the Brabham straight to complete lap number three already. About an estimated 30 laps or 30 minutes left to go. 34 minutes left to go in this race as we start to work lap number four. About five laps before that pit window is going to open. So. It's going to be curious, I think, to see if some of these guys, if they're going to take the strategy, which is what I would take, which is short pit as soon as you can, get out of the traffic, make sure you have those fresh tires that will allow you to maneuver these heavy NASCAR Gander Outdoor Truck Series uh, vehicles around this narrow circuit. I always like to have the fresher tires. Yeah, you pay for it at the end, but usually you get the field a little bit spread out as side by side. Looks like Thomas O'Leary gonna try for another spot. That's Andrew Karen on the outside, or the inside rather, as they head down the hill once again, heading towards Hawthorne, and 
Aaron just going to let him go. So Thomas O'Leary up to the seventh position. Excellent job. His truck around. That's the 49. That's Jay Stiffy. That's the other butt kicker truck as we'll take a look at the replay and find out what happened to the 49 machine. Comes down the hill here into Graham Hill Bend and uh, might have just lost the back end of it. No, he's able to hang on to it through there. So it must have happened up through Surtees. Yeah. So slow down. You head through the left-hander and maybe just lost it. I don't think he got any help. Yeah, just lost it. So unfortunately, just truck got away from him. He was kind of out there, kind of in the middle of no man's land, but you can see one truck flash by, but unfortunately for the 49, that's going to be a lot of damage. And because he knows that truck into the wall, into the Onco, that's going to be even more truck repair. There for that truck is side by side. Hello, number 10, Thomas O'Leary. He's hunting. He's going to get past Paul Slavenik right there. That was a uh, that was a pass and a half, as I believe Slavenik might have gotten past a couple of these trucks. Yeah, he did. As uh, I'm not sure what happened there, but that was a done in my pass. We'll take a look at the replay. Watch this. It's like he had DRS on. Just goes for the dive bomb, and uh, Dallas and uh, Paul Slavenik touches him just a little bit on the rear quarter. But uh, that was a you can have that dive bomb. I will let you have that one. I want nothing. I do not want to damage my truck that early on, but. It also allowed Andrew Karen to get past him as well. So that puts Paul Slavenik back to the eighth position and Thomas O'Leary is on, well, there's no other word for it, a tear up eight positions so far has been flying through and Paul Slavenik, I think is not having the, uh, the race that he wants to right now start at fifth, right now running back in the eighth position, minus three. He'll have to uh, hopefully get the second draft of this race hooked up and uh, Maybe you'll be able to find some success with that one because the first draft is not working very well right now. As I can hear the booze from the from the uh, producer truck. But meanwhile, I'll tell you one thing: Eric Blixt has not let Sven Kamerts get away too much. As we've been kind of watching this mid-pack battle, but Bobby Zelensky. Once again, doing Bobby Zelensky things. He's up about two seconds. Eric Blixt has not let Sven Kamert out of his sight. You can see second and third right now. Those two trucks are running and Blixt kind of holding on to the rear end of the uh, the 66. And that's gonna that's that's such a motivator for this because uh, for this Paul. But uh, I'm not really gonna cue him in. But it's I'm talking to Paul basically, I'm talking to you guys, and I'm talking to Paul. But basically. The way you want to run these races, because of how mistake prone you're going to be in vehicles with this much horsepower and with uh, tracks with this much curbing and this much undulation change, you're going to want to be able to focus on that guy in front of you because it gives you something to motivate you to go after that driver because you can see him and all he has to do is make one mistake and kind of like what we saw out of Jay Steffi earlier on, you could just you know, all it takes is just hit the curb the wrong way. Trucks gets a little bit loose, and all of a sudden you're right there to be able to battle. You don't want to be on top of them, though, because, well, then you're on top of them, and he makes that mistake, you're probably going to be taken out with it. And that is, uh, that's never fun as the uh, the drivers of the Block Pain uh, Endurance Championship, yeah, they'll say, they'll say very much about this. Meanwhile, we flash back a little bit earlier on. Uh, we flash back a little bit further back in your field. A couple trucks uh, doing a little bit of battle. Guess what? It's Paul Slavenik, James King, and Connor Horn. Connor Horn, meanwhile, Paul... Oh, somebody went off. Let's see. Uh... Aaron Smith, thank you very much. He, yeah, he dropped down the order. I didn't see that there. So we'll see if we can wind back and take a look at the replay there. Not the call there. So it looks like, yeah, well, I'll just try and let you know what happened there. Yeah, he just went into the gravel trap in the final cover corners there. There we go. So we'll take a look at what happened, but he was running in that fourth position. Oh, it was the hill. It was the hill coming through Dingledell, and I think that's just what upset that truck. Lost a couple positions, so he's back to sixth, and uh, was able to hold on to it. No damage, but uh, some, a lot of gravel on the uh, tires of that racing truck here. So he's back in the sixth position here. Meanwhile... Only a couple laps here till the pit window opens. You can see a great job dirt track in that. I mean, he was at Eldora a couple weeks ago with us on podium, so maybe that's where he learned how to dirt track that truck, but it was able to hold on to it and keep it going. As we want to say hello to, uh, looks like Brady has become a follower for us here on Sox Out Racing on Facebook. Just want to do give a shout out to him. Thank you very much for doing so. Give us a like because then I know who, then I'll be able to see what your last name is. So, uh, Go ahead, give the view a like as uh, Aaron Smith gonna fall off the racetrack once again there, Paul, and uh, lose even more time to the two trucks right in front of him, Thomas O'Leary and Dallas Mataska. 
Hey, I think they might be teammates. It might be possible. They're both running the same paint scheme, so I think it might be possible they're both teammates for Radicals Online. I'm not positive. Maybe, maybe one of them hijacked the other's paint. But I'm pretty sure their teammates is. Meanwhile, their teammate in Sven Kamerts is up the road in second place. Still kind of getting hounded a little bit by Eric Blixt. But uh, they drop back now. Smith and Karen going at it. As it looks like, oh no, Karen's going to get a little bit loose. He falls off the racetrack. And it looks like Karen's going to lose two spots. So he tried to go for Aaron Smith. Got a little bit loose. Lost out that spot to Paul Slavenik as well. So never mind. It all went out the window there. As uh, Karen going to fall back. And Slavenik going to steal that spot away. Karen falls back to your eighth position. Paul's able to grab one back. So he's back in seven. That's also brought James King into this battle, and I was going to start to mention Connor Horn, who remembers had that rear of the grid penalty, and uh, as a result had to start back in 16th, and uh, his array made his way back up to 10th, so up six positions for the driver of the 42, the BSR entry in that Toyota Tundra. Oh, that's why I'm looking at the wrong feed. That's why it's still late. I was looking at Facebook. That's not Mixer. That doesn't help me. As meanwhile, Connor Horn still continuing to track behind James King, Andrew Karen, and Paul Sumnick. That's a battle pack of four trucks. And we're starting to see that kind of form. It's, it's almost the accordion effect that you see in the V8, in the V8 series uh, several times in real life. These battle packs start to form, and as a result, everybody kind of gets stuck together. And it's just the way these trucks race, the way the arrow works on these trucks. Everybody kind of sticks together. It becomes like, oh, that guy, the, you know, whoever's leading the pack's generally a little bit slower than everybody else behind it. But the problem is you just can't pass easily like you could in an open wheel vehicle. So as it sits right now, everybody kind of tracking behind Paul Slavonik. You can see Karen King as well as Connor Horn in that battle pack. And then we'll slide back a little bit. A couple of tan, there's a little bit of a tandem going on right now. Clifton Cockrell and Michael Skurlock sitting there. That's kind of your next little bit of a battle there. Remember, Skurlock had that off on the first lap, got into the grass, truck got all sorts of out of shape. He's got a little bit of damage on that number 93. And we slide back, everybody else pretty much open as uh, Aaron Smith once again going to, uh, he's gonna find what the confines of track limits are because uh, he had another off-track excursion and uh, some more dirt on his tread. So the he's gonna need some more Goodyear Eagles here before, uh, before the end of this race, which he will be able to get because we are opening up into the pit window here. The pit window, of course, these trucks have to come down and make their mandatory pit stop between laps number eight, nine, nine and 18. Can't talk today. And uh, so we'll be waiting to see who hits pit road first. I would think some of these drivers probably gonna try and cut the race in half to try and get that, uh, get the best delta. But if you're in traffic, it may help you to maybe pit a little bit sooner, almost like a uh, joker Joker lap in a way because everybody is mandated to uh, to make that mandatory four tire pit stop. So as it sits right now, we're still gonna watch this battle pack. Uh, Aaron Smith, Paul Slavinick, Andrew Karen, and then James King. Ooh, Connor Horn tried to go for the pass but wasn't able to hold on to it. But he's gonna stay side by side. He's gonna run out of racing room. They come down Graham Hill Bend and he's able to hold on to it. Connor Horn. Uh, I'm not sure about track limits, but he got the pass done, used that grass, and uh, got a little bit of traction, actually, with the curve, as uh, James King going to fall back into that 11th position now, on a horn up to P number 10, and that's two positions lost there for James King, who was a, who was uh, in ninth just last time past the start-finish line, but lost that position out to Andrew Karen, now lost out to uh, James, to uh, Connor Horn as well. Looks like issues there. One truck off the racetrack there. That's Clifton Cockrell. And he's hit pit road. Came through the start finish line. We'll take a look at what happened. Turn number one. Paddock Hill Bend. Yeah, that's a good way to end up in the paddock. That is not fun for the driver of that number 21. And uh, Clifton Cockrell, that truck on pit road. That is going to be a tow back. That is going to be some damage. He's already on, been on pit road for a minute. I know you have to make a mandatory pit stop, Paul, but that is not how you want to do it. As it turns out, Paddock Hill Bend, uh, that is not the way to the paddock. You, you got to go through pit road. It's that's There was a whole thing. Paul explained it to me before the broadcast. It's a whole thing. Either way, don't use that one. That's the old one. As meanwhile, it looks like the 27 right now stalking. That's Andrew Karen once again right on the back bumper of Paul Slavonik. Paul Slavonik 
is looking at this point. He just wants a free lunch because he has been under attack this entire race. Pressure behind in front all over the place for the driver of the 88. Just can't seem to catch a break. It's the RSR Esports Red driver just right now on the back deck lid of that number 88 as they head up the hill once again through Pilgrim's drop down under the bridge. Then Hawthorne once again. We are in the pit window. Keep in mind Clifton Cockrell obviously unwillingly has taken the first pit stop of the day. Everybody else I think probably going to split this race in half as best as they can. So, oh geez everybody, I've got to do math. That means probably around laps 13 to 14. Somewhere around there is when I think if you're going to get the best delta, you'd want to come down pit road. And of course, we can talk about the fact that those cold tires definitely going to play a factor here as Karen took a look to the outside that time of Slavonic. Not going to happen there as they head up towards uh, Clark Curve once again. Going to try maybe a little bit of a crossover. He's going to do a little bit better of a run off the corner there. He'll take a look to the inside. It could be a dive if he, uh, if he wants to. Slavonic guards that spot and says, uh, no sir, you cannot dive here. We are not diving at Paddock Hill Bend. And I don't blame him, but Unfortunately, with that dive, lost a little bit of the uh, corner off speed. And Paul Slavinick going to slide through uh, through Druids there and down Graham Hill Bend once again. Andrew Karen looks like he's going to take it side by side. Can he get the position away? He's done it on the grass before. Uses uh, those a uh, little bit of a hardened surface on the grass. He's going to be able to do it. And Paul Slavinick and the, uh, the freight train seems to have come out of the station because now Connor Horn wants to add his name. Three truck battle there for that seventh place position. Down the hill once again into Hawthorne. Connor Horn got way out of the throttle, wants nothing to do with it. Paul Slavinek gonna try for the crossover. Skull, Country, Skull Candy entry not able to do it. And just like that, a oh, little bit of a wiggle of the hips there from Andrew Karen, but other than that, that truck able to complete the pass on Paul Slavinik. Still continuing to fall down the order. Minus three right now for the 88. Not looking great. But Connor Horn once again clawing his way through this field up seven positions. And you can see he's hungry. He wants more as we look from on board the number 42 right on the back bumper. We slow down once again for Clark Curve. And we're going to be starting to look to see when our guy is going to be making that dive to pit road. We're on lap number 13. But we're within what I think would be the, the preferred window. Connor Horn dived to the outside. I wouldn't do it there, and he's not able to do it there. As Slavonek gonna cover that place on the racetrack once again. Dive to the outside again. Truck gets all sorts of loose. He's able to hold on to it through Druids. And down the hill once again to Graham Hill. And no, he's, no, he's not gonna be able to make the move there. The problem is he's making, he has the speed pull, but he's just not able to, to make the pass. He just is picking the wrong places for it. I like the way that uh, that uh, Karen set up kind of the crossover move. He faked like he was going to dive into Paddock Hill. Slavinik covered, and that just allowed Karen to just make him look kind of silly at that point because Slavinik lost all that speed. Karen just drove around him just like a, just a normal pass, just like uh, Slavinik was standing still. So I do like that crossover move that... Uh, that uh, Karen was able to do on the 88, but Horn in position once again as we head up the hill through the right-hand turn. Hold on a little bit of a break here, and ooh, yep, got a little bit loose once again. Counter Horn got the grass, hold on to it. And just like that, it all goes up in smoke for the 42, got a little too aggressive. And uh, just like that, looks like uh, James King was able to, yep, to come down to, uh, Able to hold on to that as everybody get a hit pit road. Bobby Zelensky, Sven Cameron, Eric Blix, all on pit road. Thomas O'Leary, Aaron Smith, Paul Slavinick, James King, Connor Horn. They all hit pit road. I'll tell you who didn't hit pit road. Andrew Karen and Dallas Potaska. Everybody else as it sits right now. Hitting pit road right now. Splitting this race effectively in half. I'll tell you what, Bobby Zelensky, the crew, fantastic job. 13.7 in the pit stall there and a 13.3 actually 13.4 for Sven Kamert so the time was there for Sven he just the gap is too big right now we're talking ooh, that's about four set three and a half four seconds from Bobby Zelensky back to Sven Kamert so that is a huge margin there between those two three and a half yep three and a half to four seconds perfect as everybody hit pit road Steven Dager though looks like he did not as well trying to get the undercut He's paying for it right now. Just had to put Paul Slavinick by. Thomas O'Leary just went by. The old tires are paying 
on that 63 right now. He, I think, tried to get maybe a position or something like that, but just it did not work for the 63. He has got to hit pit road this time. It has not been a happy race for that driver, the 63. Dallas Potaska now finally going to hit pit road. Waited one lap later. We'll have to see what difference the tires make. I can't think it's going to be a good thing for Dallas Potaska. Oh, fresher tires at the end, but generally if you wait that extra lap, you lose that hot lap out like uh, what Bobby Zelensky and Andrew Karen are doing right now. And Karen also going to hit pit road. So uh, Bobby Zelensky now going to flash by, and he's in his own zip code. He's he's in his an entirely different county. I don't know what the county next to Kent is, Paul, but... Oh, Aaron missed his pit stall. He did slide through, so Karen going to have to lose a little bit of time here. We'll see if we'll take a second look at that, see what happened to the 27 came into pit road and just yeah just went through the pit stall it's easy to do lock up the brakes on the old tires and you can see there's the time differential two extra seconds on the pit lane because of it almost three and uh, about an extra second in the pit stop as well so andrew karen lost all that time he's going to flash back to about the seventh place position right now he's behind james king and uh kind of he's still in front the good news is he is in front of uh, thomas o'leary so it didn't affect him too badly but uh i am looking what happened to Paul Slavinick? That has not gone the way he's wanted to as well. And yeah, Thomas O'Leary, a very long stop, 45 seconds. That tells me, Paul, that he probably sped coming onto pit road because that's about a 15 minute penalty coming onto pit road. Not 15 minutes, 15 seconds. Thank you very much. As uh, I am looking, the 88, what on earth happened in that pit stop? Because he was two seconds slower. Paul Slavinick is back with Connor Horn right now. I, they might have checked up coming down pit road because Connor Horn also had a speeding penalty on pit road as well. Why is Paul Slavonik so far back here? I'm not really sure why, but the 88, for whatever reason, just did not have a great kind of pit sequence there and is back at 11th, so six places. Oh, he spun. Oh, he actually spun. That's what the issue was, Paul. It was coming through, uh, I believe that was Sterling's and hit the truck off the curb. He was back up with Thomas O'Leary and just the truck, I talked about cold tires. That might've been all, it's, all it was. Slavonek spun and it allowed uh, Steven Dager by and allowed all those trucks by as uh, Dager actually still has not hit pit road yet. That is a brave move by the 63. Him, Gregory, Stiffy, and Mertz, the four drivers who have not pitted yet as uh, Connor Horn. Once again, the battle continues as uh, despite the fact that we saw that pit road penalty as Dager you can see on your screen does come down pit road right now Connor Horn despite the fact he had the pit road penalty the battle continues as the 42 once again goes to attack the 88 these two will not let each other go come wreck or speeding penalty they'll continue to battle as oh on the grass he goes able to hold on to it is the number 42 down to the inside once again. Used a little bit of curb. He's there. He's got the nose in. Slavonic going to cover that position, though. Cuts the nose off the 42. So the 88 trying to hold him off as they head down. Pilgrims drop once again into Hawthorne. Horn takes a look. Kind of fake to the inside like he was going to dive it in, but does not do so. Connor Horn just going to sit there and kind of attack a little bit. He's right there trying to grab that 10th place position. Comes off the curb a little bit but he'll be content to ride, ride behind Paul Slavonik as they run right now. Flashing up, meanwhile, a little bit of a battle. Yep, Paul, you went right where I was thinking, Andrew Karen, hold on tight. Side, side by side with Thomas O'Leary. As uh, O'Leary able to get past there in Paddock Hill Bend. on there that was all grass ball that's exactly what that was Karen got the uh, the left hand side tires just on the grass enough to unsettle that truck and he goes right around it's apparently my uh, demon cough is deciding to come back and apparently I'm in North Carolina again that's what that means but either way James King opens up a little bit of a gap on Thomas O'Leary and Andrew Karen through that battle because they got all sideways just like that. They lost a little bit of time as you can see. That's the lap truck of uh, Joshua Mertz back there, the 28, the Atlas Simsport truck. Not having the out the uh, the outing he was hoping for started 11th back in 16th. So not not a fun day for uh, for Josh Mertz. It's right now plus seven spots. Thomas O'Leary sitting plus seven. 
plus four is Michael Skurlock, and uh, plus five is Connor Horn. So that's kind of, if you're looking to see who your hard chargers are, right now it's got to be Thomas O'Leary in that 10 truck. Lap 18 is going to be when these trucks have to pit, and Jay Stiffy, the only one who has not done so, he's going to have to do it this time. And that'll be your last truck who has yet to pit. Of course, Clifton Cockrell also not completed his pit stop, going on 12 minutes now, so... Once again, talk about bad outings, the 21. That was not the way he wanted to. We saw him slide off in Paddock Hill and uh, has been on pit road just trying to get all the required damage on that truck done as James King got a little bit loose and is starting, uh, Thomas O'Leary starting to uh, close the gap once again on that truck. It's gonna start to get a little bit spicy here as we're past halfway, just about nine laps left to go in this super sprint. Of course, uh, time still kind of forget, uh, continuing to progress. It is, oh, by the way, uh, yes, it is. It is iRacing Day. So, uh, no, it isn't. It's May 11th. Is, is that iRacing Day? I think iRacing Day is technically May 14th. I forget what the, de what the default day is. But nonetheless, Thomas O'Leary continuing to attack James King. As King comes down the hill in, through Dingledale and into Sheens, they'll be heading up towards Sterling. I wouldn't try it there. He would have turned him if he wasn't careful. And ooh, got a little bit loose, did James King. And they'll fight through Sterling's. They'll head down clearways towards Jim Clark Curve. And Thomas O'Leary, he'll get the run off the corner. And that's all it takes. Thomas O'Leary able to uh, to complete that pass. But now James King going to try and get the undercut. And O'Leary got a little bit loose off the corner. So he's going to have a move there. They'll be side by side as they head to Paddock Hill. Thomas O'Leary, excellent job of defense right there. Just ran the outside line. That's really the line you love to run at Paddock just because of the way the, the elevation changes there. You can run that outside and use all that runoff. There's so much runoff room there to use. As the touring car drivers will tell you, there's plenty of room there that you can make that uh, outside line work in your favor. As meanwhile, Andrew Karen trying to recover from a little bit of the heated up rear tires as he's had to deal with. And oh, by the way, if you're curious, where's our leader, Bobby Zelensky, Paul, he's out. He's out in, uh, I think he's in Ireland at this point. He's out there about five seconds over Sven Kamertz. He's, yeah, he's way out there. Eric Blicks, also, that's that's another five second or so gap. It's about 10.5 back to Eric Blix. Yeah, you can see on your screen, Dallas Potaska, another five seconds back. Oh, Andrew Karen, that's the gravel trap. That's not fun. You do not want to go over there as we'll take a second look and what happened to the 27 I think once again saw the red mist the red mist descended Paul and just like that ate the curb apex is out hits the curb again and you can see he's trying to get every inch he can oh that was too much I think he psyched himself out with the closing rate on James King and that's all it took truck spins out and uh, just like that he loses all the time that he had made up and he is out in no man's land right now back in eighth not where he wanted to run down two positions from where he was. Hey, there's Bobby Zelensky, the first time we've seen the purple and orange in a little bit of a while here, mainly because he's been so far in front, the VRS driver doing an excellent job and does hold the fastest lap of the day so far uh, on the boards. He's the only driver, in fact, who's gone in the 124s and by a huge margin, 124.5 if you're rounding up. So an excellent job by Bobby Zelensky. By contrast, you go back to Sven Gamertz, your second fastest driver there. His fastest lap of 125.2. And uh, at that point, you kind of see everybody around the same place. Eric Blix, fastest lap of 125.3. Matasco, 125.1. And then Thomas O'Leary, a 125.3. So that just shows you how much in the uh, next level Bobby Zelensky is right now, the driver. Uh, out of the VRS Coanda stable. There's Eric Blix, the uh, the black and yellow number 89. He's also kind of in no man's land right now. As Fen Cameron's kind of, that's why we haven't seen a lot of these top drivers. Nobody's around anybody. So the closest battle, actually, we're looking on track. Everybody's kind of spaced it out. It's Connor Horn and Paul Slavinick, and even that battle's kind of opened up to about a second now. Well, I just say that, Paul Slavinick, commentator's curse, loses the corner in Sheen's. And impacts the Onco barrier. And unfortunately, the uh, the commentator's curse continues. We've had it at podium, and now it's back to race spot TV. So we've gone full circle with this thing again. Please, somebody come and shake it. Paul Slavinik. Well, he had to pulp that truck. That is uh, that is done. 
So he's going to have to... Uh, I, we talked about the second draft. Yeah, he's going to have to trash it. He's just going to have to start from scratch. New do, new text document. Thank you very much. The 88 of Paul Slavinik. And I stop. I'll stop, Paul. I'll stop. I had to get that one in. As I can, uh, He's probably going to turn off my mic if I just keep making puns like that. So Connor Horn, uh, the easiest pass he'll make all day. He's up to 10th. And I think what had been such a long fight for him finally... Uh, finally uh, slows itself down he's up six spots right now but the story of the day if you're talking about guys who have worked their way through the field Thomas O'Leary up eight spots oh Slavonik's around again oh geez it goes from bad to worse for the 88 and well I think that's a case where this is very much a rhythmic track as a lot of these kind of smaller circuits in the UK are it's a rhythmic track if you lose that rhythm especially in these trucks yeah, you don't have ABS, you don't have traction control, you just have uh, a very mad rear axle and a, uh, an onco barrier, as we found there. So Paul Slavonik goes from bad to worse. He's in 11th right now, and he just wants this race to be over, as we're at six laps to go right now. But like I said, Thomas O'Leary has been on a tear, and, well, he's got the next truck in his sights. It's the bright yellow truck of Aaron Smith the second. And uh, O'Leary, I don't think he's done here, Paul. I think he wants to go on and uh, to grab that position as well, as well as that would be his, uh, he would break into the top five if he could do that to the Radicals Online Turn Racing Truck. I'm sensing that, I'm, I'm not sure, Paul, if we're able to tell where, no, he did not put down a qualifying time. That would be why because I think if he did, he would have started around here in the top six or so, even maybe further towards the front of the field because he's had pace, the rest of the drivers. But, well, Paul, if you don't put down a qualifying time, you can't start with the guys that you qualify near. So I'm not sure that might have been because, uh, I'm not sure, was that a new driver perhaps? The series I'm looking through, yes, that's exactly what it was. It was a late entry. So because of the late entry, Thomas O'Leary had to start from the back. That's exactly why he started back there, Paul. So unfortunately, Thomas O'Leary, because of the late entry, didn't know if he was going to run right away, and it forced him to run back through this field. He probably could have fought for your top three if, uh, if he had the opportunity and uh, had gotten his entry in on time. So unfortunately, Thomas O'Leary has had a hard days at work. And, well, I'll tell you what, if we're in the UK, he's been working like a dog because uh, he's trying to grab that fifth place position now from Aaron Smith. That battle's close to about half a second right now. If that battle isn't enough, also Andrew Karen, actually, we'll go to that. They're side by side. Andrew Karen trying to take on James King, the 23 and the 27. He tried the attempt there. The King all over the track is now Karen stalking him, trying to grab that position away. So we come through and we head towards the straightaway down Pilgrim's Drop once again. We'll keep an eye on both battles. I'll tell you what, Paul, show this battle on screen. I'll watch the other one. Whoever moves first, uh, we'll, uh, we'll let you know. But right now you can see Thomas O'Leary still trying to track down Aaron Smith the second and Andrew Karen trying to do the same. We'll stay with Smith and uh, we'll stay with Smith and uh, O'Leary right now on your screen. I'll let you know if Karen and uh, King do anything different here. So, yep, there it goes, side by side. Thank you very much. Thomas O'Leary made that made that look easy as a pass through Sheens. As they head through Sterling's just going to try and open up the gap, and not too far away from O'Leary is, uh, that's the lap truck app, actually right in front of him of Roger Gregory. So not a great battle there as, uh, yeah, we're watching this Karen King battle once again. Karen got a little bit loose, and... Uh, just finding out uh, on the other side, they're just finishing up the final lap, so it will be just me towards the end of this thing. About four laps to go here from uh, the V8 Super Truck World Championship race here at Brands Hatch. Andrew Karen on the attack, gonna try and do everything he can to steal that position away. Just not able to do it quite yet, but right in the right, he's got James King in his sights. He's gonna try and press the attack here for a minute. Is still side by side right or actually no nose to tail right now Andrew Karen oh you can see James King got a little bit loose right there as he was able to hold on to it and uh, as we welcome a, a very random Randy Cheneth 
sneaking in the booth there. It's it's cameo. Usually we don't see him unless there's oval cars involved, but uh, he snuck in. I don't know how. He even got a passport to make it to the UK, so let's go figure. But as it sits right now, still an excellent job. James King trying to hold on to that position. Andrew Karen sitting in that A position. He's going to close the gap right there through Dingledell and through Sheens. He's right there trying to grab that spot away. Yeah, not able to hold on to it, though, as uh, James King right on the back bumper. Maybe he'll try it through Jim Clark Curve. He looks to the inside. He, he made it like he's going to try and take the look. I don't think you're going to do it there, though, Paul, as they come three laps to go left on the board for what has been a very dominant Bobby Zelensky. But the battles aren't done on track. And I'll tell you what, Aaron Smith has, Aaron Smith has not let go of Thomas O'Leary either. Those two about within half a second of each other. Aaron Smith, ooh, a little bit skatey there as they come through uh, through uh, Graham Hill Bend as well as Randy, uh, I think, had to go back to the U.S. I think they kicked him out of the U.K. So, unfortunately, no Randy Cheneth here. But none the, nonetheless, Andrew Karen still right on the back bumper of uh, James King. You can see that's a great shot, the static shot there. Uh, oh, darn it. <laughs> I wish we could hold that because we could see the, the difference between the, these two battles that we're watching. And now this might be it. He took a look. They're going to have the lap truck of Gregory to get around. Andrew Karen right there on the back bumper of James King. What can he do? He closes the gap. That was a huge gain there through Hawthorne Bend down. Minter straight into Westfield. Oh, he's right there, Paul. He just needs a little bit better of a run. But once again, the truck, the rear tires breaking loose. The traction just isn't there for Andrew Karen. Bruce Sheens, once again, they hit the curb. Both hit the curb. Nose to tail right now. Two laps to go. Bobby Zelensky's out by a country mile. And there, that might have been what Andrew Karen needed. Dives to the outside of James King. Can he get it done through Clark Curve? He can't. Nope, James King going to cover the position, holds on to it once again. James Cl King clinging on for dear life, and that seventh place position. As meanwhile, Thomas O'Leary, Aaron Smith, they started to battle a little bit, but nope, not quite a, uh, not quite able to do anything. Andrew Karen still throwing everything he has at James King. This battle will not die as this race in the uh, in the final stages. And Andrew Karen grabbed that position back. He's been trying to make up the positions he lost. And uh, James King trying to hold on to the one position he gained. So both these drivers have a little something at stake here. James King wants to have that plus one next to his name. Andrew Karen trying to undo some of the damage from the beginning of this race. A little bit of a shimmy there from that truck. Oh, he's lost a little bit of time there, Paul. So I'm not sure if he's going to have enough time to do it. But meanwhile, we flash up white flag in the air. Bobby Zelensky has taken it. This is this is a clinical race. And uh, once again, Bobby Zelensky, guess what? He's back. This is not the, the Dallas Potaska show either. As you can see, the bright red rotors on the 83. And he's lost a little bit of time to Sven Kamertz. But when you have a seven second gap back to your second place truck, you don't have to worry there too much. Bobby Zelensky heads through. Surtees for the final time and heads up the hill once again towards Pilgrim's Drop. He's only got one lap truck to worry about. I believe that is the uh, the stricken 88 of Paul Slavonic is side by side. Here we go. We were waiting for it. Andrew Karen and uh, James King. They're going to go at it. King's got the outside line, though. Can he hold on? Andrew Karen going to come off the corner, but King's going to have the speed up on the top side. They'll stay side by side as they head into Druids. Karen going to have the preferred line, but King's going to have the preferred line through Graham Hill Bend. Not going to be able to get the pass done. They'll stay side by side. Off the racetrack goes the number 27. They're still side by side as they head into Surtees. Up the hill once again. We'll leave this quickly for the moment because Bobby Zelensky comes around the last corner. No problems for the 83. He's got it done, and he will win here from Brands Hatch. The 83 goes to victory lane.